Hello everybody and welcome back to the FM24 Youth Academy Challenge of CD Toledo. It's the end of the season, which means it's time for a review. Let's go and have a look. Yes, hello fellow managers, welcome back to the save and uh, we are carrying on from where we left off yesterday. Yesterday was youth intake day, which means we had the run in for the season. And as you'll see on the screen, we've got loads of money. We've got loads of money. We've got absolutely loads of money. Um, and we're starting here so that it doesn't go straight into you seeing the league. But we finished. Drum roll, please. Sixth. Way. We're in Europe. We, we got a European position again after me thinking that we might miss out. But I think it is the Europa League. Uh, 38 games played. 19 wins. So we won half of our games, which isn't too bad. Six draws. 13 losses. We're still losing too many games. Uh, goal difference of plus 12 and 63 points finishing one point behind who i'm now declaring our arch rivals severe they are so irritating uh, we will eventually beat them i'm sure but uh, yeah not a bad season to be to be fair two fate 23 goals in the season miguel moreno the highest average rating uh, he got the most assists with 11 andrew neeson up there with 91 percent pass completion ratio moreno got the most player of the matches um, akinde aaron wall and andrew neeson got the most yellow cards and only one red card all season for crimson mori so not too bad to be honest i've got a feeling that's only in the league though because i'm pretty sure we picked up a red card in europe if i remember rightly but um Yes, I think the stats just below that sum this up. Hopefully Editing Dave is moving this around all in real time as I'm saying it. But uh, yeah, 38 games played. We are the third highest goal scorers in the league with 75 goals. That is mightily impressive. However, we're also the sixth worst for goals conceded, 63. So that's where we need to improve. Defence is where we need to improve. We are the third worst teams picking up yellow cards with 67. We actually got zero red cards in the La League, so that must be the one in Europe I was thinking about. Um, and we have 28,718 people in the stadium, which is the 10th worst. So mid-table for attendance, which isn't actually too bad. But yes, it's the goals conceded, which I am most concerned about. And we're going to touch on that in a minute in the Data Hub, which is a thing I think is pretty much useless but we're going to dive in and see what we can see from the data and see if we can pull anything out of it but if we look at the squad as we know two favors up there 23 goals this season as the main man as the lead striker but off the left hand side moreno's still up there 25 goal contributions for him this season crimson more he's still showing he can do it but doesn't want to sign a new contract because well he's being very very irritating because he's still moaning if we actually click on him it might is it still i oh, know you're you're not moaning anymore maybe you will have a new contract resolve contract talks i'm not desperate let's just he like, doesn't have long it's in the interest of both of us the clock's ticking we need to turn to talks as soon as possible okay right right crimson come on mate the problem is is you're not a star player anymore you're not. Look, I mean, our assistant thinks you should be emergency backup. I'll give you regular starter. You want to be a star player. And I don't want you to be an attacking midfielder because there's something else I've noticed about that that we're not going to do. But we'll give you a new deal. You can have three years. That's not a problem. Yeah, all of this is fine. Money money is no object to us. So it looks like Crimson Mori will be getting a new deal, which is lovely. But... Um, yeah, goals-wise, I mean, he got Pedro Morea, the youngster, popped up with 11 as well. Great, Joel Pozzo with 7, 9 assists for him as well. Uh, and then we get into the, the lower sort of numbers. Assist-wise, 11 for Moreno, 9 for Andreas, 9 for Pozzo, 9 for Akinde, 8 for Aaron Wall, 7 for Xavi, which is impressive because he's plays right back but not the best um and then five apiece for supreme and holic and then we drop into everyone below four but everyone to be fair had a decent season but the what i wanted to touch on because i think in these reviews i sort of just get lost in the league don't i get lost in the, by the way look at everybody's morale bloody hell everybody is like delighted with life other than pascal i guess it's because we've probably got into europe and they've got a big bonus because I did put the bonus high on everything if we could. So they're probably happy with that. Other than you, you're exceptional because of your training. Okay. Well, you're delighted with the situation at the club. Satisfied with management. Satisfied with playing time. Satisfied with treatment. But concerned with his training at the moment. But everybody else is literally loving life. How fascinating. Anyway, what I was looking at, there's a couple of things. One, we're going to go... I have obviously tried to sort of plan this episode out, believe it or not. But uh, yeah. Right, our assistant manager, this is the assistant manager's opinion of the player's best position. Right, if you look in here, 
We have no one whose best position is attacking midfield. No one. Literally no one. We've got right backs, centre backs, left backs, holding midfielders, central midfielders, wingers and strikers. We don't have anyone whose official best position, judging by the assistant manager, is attacking midfield. That really, like, surprised me. Really surprised me. And our assistant manager isn't too bad at this sort of judgment and stuff. Old, uh, what's his name? Pal Marty. That's it. Didn't he used to be? He used to be a player. Sorry, he used to be a player. I swear he used to be a player, Pal Marty. Anyway, um, but yeah, he's got judging player ability 15 and judging player potential 14. Now, I don't know if tactical knowledge potentially comes in for how to judge a player's position, but the, it, it's also very strange that the b best positions he gives people fit into his system. And I'm like, I don't know if there's a link there, or should we potentially be using 4-1-2-3, uh, 4-3-3 with a whole 4 3, three DM, basically. But we're going to go and look at some other stats and data and stuff in a minute as well, because if you're new to the channel, I do love data. I absolutely love data. So um, we're going to look at that in a minute. But yeah, the other thing is, do we now upgrade our assistant manager? He's got a really good reputation because he's coming up from the league, and he's on a really low wage, which doesn't really matter. But I'm sort of just thinking, and I've not looked into this yet, but if we go into staff search and go edit uh, and get rid of this and get rid of that because I don't care if they're... Thing. Oh, Constantino, who we bought in, who was on a free transfer after he left the club, retired, went to become a staff. We made him the under-19s assistant manager. He's buggered off and he's now managing Oviedo or someone. Someone gave him a job, uh, which was very, very annoying. But anyway, we want an assistant manager. Pick highlight attributes, assistant manager, fine. And then I am going to go tactical knowledge, potentially motivating as well. I don't think you need anything else here to determine, like, who's there. Oh, and, oh, my God, and he's a perfectionist. Oh, my God, he's unreal. Carlos Machena, he definitely used to be a player. And he's unemployed. I think he's coming in. I think he's coming in. He works really well with youngsters. The better ability and potential ability judge. And he's got better people management. And he's got better motivating. Oh, my word. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really sorry, but we're going to just make sure you come to us and we'll give you a five-year deal. We are going to bin off Pal Marty, who has been with us, I think, since the beginning. This is such a risky thing to do. When did we hire Pal Marty? We hired him in... He got League Manager of the Year runner-up. What is that? That's a bug. That's a bug. Uh, he got assistant manager 2031. Okay, so he wasn't here straight from the off. He hasn't been with us forever. But it's the one thing I've not really um, improved on is assistant manager. I've been upgrading all the staffs and everything like that, but I've not ever upgraded Pal Marty, which is interesting. Yeah. Anyway, um, so what we'll do is we'll see if that happens and see if that changes what he thinks best positions are. If it doesn't, we may be changing to a 4-1-2-3 or a 4-3-3 holding midfielder. But the other thing I wanted to look at was Data Hub. Right, now, as I said, I don't really like the Data Hub. I think there's a lot of crap that's bogging down good things to learn from in the Data Hub. So one of the best things is the last five matches, right? You can come in and you can see how you've done the last five matches and you can use this sort of stuff to go through here and see what's happening. But... um. Yeah, there's, there's a few things in here that I think we can... I mean, Aaron Wall has lost possession more than any other player, which is interesting. Uh, normally plays as a left winger, so he's sort of losing it high up the pitch, which is what I'm getting here. Uh, left back, I should say, because this is us defending this half and attacking that half. Obviously, if you think about the left, then the same over here as well. So he's actually not losing too much. I mean, that's a very dangerous one to lose but he's not losing too much possession in his actual left back position it's when he's much higher up the pitch which I don't mind and the other thing was out of here is that we've defended attacks from the left very well so yeah I mean our right backs are, are generally doing quite well defensively and Aaron Wall's losing possession high up the pitch which I don't really mind worry too much of but you can get some interesting stats like this so seven of the 10 goals we've scored have enjoyed with possession for 60 to 70 seconds which means when we actually build up build up play we're actually scoring recently seven of ten goals so maybe again it's lowering the tempo a little bit maybe we've uh, evolved into that sort of team um however 101 of the 259 occasions in the last 10 games or five games which is quite a lot 259 we've allowed the opposition into the attacking third of the pitch has come from central positions but you can see quite a lot of the passes are going sort of 
width what wide i would say we haven't got too many actually coming from here straight into our box so we are forcing them wide which I don't mind. I think it's quite a good idea. So this is quite an interesting thing. I mean, four of the nine goals you've conceded have been scored from positions close to the penalty spot. He recommends employing a low block. I'm like, really? I don't think so, given that one was Sevilla, yeah, one was Levante, and two were from Real Madrid, who have probably just done a little cutback. I can probably see. Can I see if you click on it? Does it load it up? No, it doesn't. Okay, that's probably something I would look to implement. But anyway, that was just something I wanted to touch on. But then what you can actually do is get to your anal analyst report for the whole season. And generally, this page is generally quite good all round. So in our previous 25 matches, we used two different formations, blah de blah Yeah, we've faced eight different formations. This box just sums up what you can see here, which is that uh, we'll get into in a minute. But scoring-wise... This is quite useful. 28 of a total of 88 assists in the last 50 matches have come from just outside the penalty area, which isn't too bad. Um, and 30 of a total of 88 assists in the last 50 matches have come from crosses. Not too bad. But if we go here, this is what I wanted to look at for assists, right? So seven assists from corners. Not too bad. One from a free kick. Needs to be better. Short passes, 10. Crosses, 30. Shows that we are really getting to the byline and basically doing low crosses or, or mix crosses into the box. 12 coming from an opposition mistake. 25 from through balls isn't too... It's pretty good. But if you think it's last 50 matches, it's not that many. Um, uh, medium passes one and square balls two. So you can see we're scoring the majority of our goals from crosses. Which, if you've watched the games and previously, then you know it's when we get into these sort of positions and we're either dinking it to the back post for someone to attack it or into the near post. Um, and down that. And crosses is quite a loose term. I would probably say more of them are square balls cut across, but yeah, there you go. Um, and of course, in, in all, let's just go uh, league matches. Let's look at league matches. So 21 uh, goals from strikers, 23, 13, 5, 4, 4, and 4. Um, not too bad. That's the positions that people are playing in that they've scored. If we go back to the assist for the, for the league, it's a bit more close, isn't it? Through balls, 20, crosses, 24. Uh, not too bad. Um, and then goals, yeah, placed shots, powerful shots. This is the sort of thing you can't really do much with. We're scoring lots of our goals from the central position. Um, that's about it. Don't score many from outside the box, which makes sense because our long shots is pretty dreadful for everybody. Um, and then you can look at conceding as well. So, yeah, we concede mainly from this central spot here with placed shots is mainly what we concede the most of. Uh, but let's get into league matches again. Yeah, it doesn't really change where it is. Uh, assists. We are conceding assists. You can see here, generally, we defend our final third quite well. It's actually this point in here. So it's probably through balls coming in, which is wet, rare because we didn't see too many of those before. Um, and then I, I assume this means 23 strike, 23 goals have been for, scored by someone in a striker position against us. But it doesn't really make sense. Um, that but anyway the formations is what i really wanted to touch on as you can see here yes we have started the 4-2-3-1 dm am wide 45 times which is much more than any other formation but even when we've started these systems no cl clear cut chances created none none or oh, and there, there were but maybe no chance created, no chances against no, no and then chance every 138 minutes chance against every 138 minutes use for 553 minutes this used for 4,080 minutes, but we are creating 20 more chances than we're giving up in a 4-2-3-1, which is why I don't really want to go away from the 4-2-3-1, but technically our players are more suited to a 4-3-3 DM, which is annoying. Also then you come into this, and in our formations faced, thinking, if you remember, we've used this formation, the 4-2-3-1, in pretty much all of our minutes this year, bar what, 50? 553 plus 23 so not even a thousand minutes for for over 4,000 minutes we've used a 4231 that has faced eight different formations and come up in positive clear-cut chances against all of them against all of them which is amazing isn't it it's amazing that so when we come up against another 4-2-3-1 DM AM wide, we get 10 more chances than the opposition. When we come up against the 4-3-3 DM, one more chance. So we struggle to break that down through the middle. Um, and what you can learn from this, which is why I quite like this, this page, is that everything that's narrow, we struggle to break down. So you've got the 4-3-3 DM wide that has this sort of 
five in the middle that we struggle to break down. You've got the four, two, 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 which has this box of four in here, and these two probably drop in as well. Struggle to break that down. Four, four, two, diamond arrow has that five again. Struggle to break that down. Five, three, two has this six at the back that we struggle to break down. And our five, two, three has five at the back that we struggle to break down. So, general, oh, that is actually minus one. Uh, that's all severe, isn't it? You just know that's all severe. When we come up against the 5-2-3, it's the only system we create less chances. So that's the one we need to adapt against. And then the, the narrow ones we need to look to potentially adapt. But everything else is working pretty good, I'm going to say, with the system that we've got. So that's why I'm a little bit torn about what do we do because the system we're using is working it could just be our players aren't good enough to get us up into like the top two positions of the league because it's Barcelona and Real Madrid so yeah I'm not sure let me know your thoughts down below but generally the season was okay um it was the, the last game I played before the youth intake was Osasuna and then after that I said we could win all of these games except for Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid what actually happened is we won them all apart from Burgess, Sevilla and Madrid because I obviously should have flagged up the fact that we'd lose to Sevilla. But um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Uh, losing to Burgos was very disappointing. But uh, Mallorca would beat them 6-1, which was lovely. Uh, Villarreal beat them 2-1. Uh, beat Athletic Bilbao 3-2, which was really good. An 82nd and 84th minute goals from us got us the win. We beat Atletico Madrid 3-0, which was really good. Lost to Sevilla. Beat Valencia 3-2 with an 84th minute winner. Uh, lost to Real Madrid. And then beat Levante. Um, they got a man or sent off in the 88th minute. Where, where they'd gone 1-0 up, we went 2-1. And then they got a man sent off. But yeah, it was um, it was interesting. It was it was an interesting end to the season. I didn't really try too much, um, like deviation from what we normally do, and it seemed to have worked. And I'm sort of like I don't really. Yeah, I'm in a catch twenty two position for next season. I think because we've got players that are suited to playing a four three three DM, but our four two three one system is working really well. So I'm not too sure what to do. And your comments are always welcome. I read them all. I respond to them all, as you know. Eventually, if, if I'm away, I'll respond to them when I get back. But like our under-19s, who aren't as happy, to be honest, um, yeah, they're now more stocked full of players, which is lovely. They all got a contract, as I said. Uh, and the B team, there's a couple of players in here that may get a little chance. Um, Juan Cesaro may get a call up as stats go down because he's on holiday. But um, yeah, we've got another one here. Miguel Martinez may get a... a Bit of game time, but no one's really developing to be amazing at the moment. Uh, we've got Kyoka down here who did step up a little bit to the first team. Next year probably will be in the first team squad. So yeah, it's, it's a tough sort of end of season of what to pull out and what we can improve on. I don't really know what to do. We All I know is that we just need to concede less goals. If we conceded less goals, we're higher up the table. And I know that's an obvious thing to say. But if you think we're the third highest scoring team in the league, that to me says don't change too much about how you're actually playing. But we're conceding so many goals, we need to be a bit more solid defensively. But I don't want to take away like our really attacking fullbacks because that they're a big part of how we score goals. You can tell from the assists they've got. Maybe it's the holding midfielders. Maybe one sits on defend so they sit in a little bit. While the other one pushes on, I'm, I'm not sure. Let me know down below, but we'll have a look. But yeah, there's not much else to talk about, really. That's what I wanted to do. But I've shown you bits of the data hub I like to use at the end of the season. We've gone through who got the goals. You know, that It's the assist that's... I mean, I mean, that's a winger, right? Left winger got the most assists. But then after that, our second highest assister is our right back. Um, and Aaron Wall, who's our starting left back is our fifth best assister and Xavi who is our second our backup right back is our sixth best assister so we can't really stop the wing backs pushing on so I think it's gonna have to be something centrally that we look to sort out and I'm, I'm just wondering if we did this right if we played a sort of system like this and went central midfielder on attack and then even like a supporting role over here and then just having a DM in here on defend or a ball winner or depending on what it what it looks like it just gives us that solid three at the back so yeah i'm not 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let me know down below. But hopefully you've enjoyed this little end of season review. I don't want it to be a long video or a big video. Um, it literally is just to show you where we finished in the league. Oh, let's go and have a quick look. Who won the Champions League if it's been finished? It should be finished because we've had our um, our thing. It is, it's a Newcastle v Man City final. Wow, there you go. How far did Bayern Munich get? Uh, Newcastle beat Real Madrid 6-5 on aggregate. Man City beat Bayern Munich 3-2. So, there you go. Uh, no, they bought in an extra time. Sorry, I said aggregate. Aggregate doesn't exist anymore. Uh, extra time, Newcastle beat Madrid. Bloody hell, where are Newcastle in the league? Fourth. They're only fourth. Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, Newcastle, Arsenal, Brighton. Man United finishing down in tenth. Norwich, Blackburn and Palace getting relegated. Bloody hell. Wow, looks like a very interesting... Uh, Interesting English league system, to be honest. But anyway, there we go. Um, not much else to discuss, is there? We've got our reputation has gone down to four star. We were four and a bit uh, before. Training facilities are great. Youth facilities are great. Youth recruitment is great. Uh, Jesse Lingard is our head of youth development, and we're getting a new assistant manager, which I think is all pretty nice. But yeah, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one, which will be the start of the next season, and we'll see how that league season starts. We need to score more. Well, score roughly the same. Concede less. That is the objective for next year. Concede less. In fact, let, before we finish, I've said before we finish quite a few times, right? But before we finish, stats, team, overview, um... There's got to be conceded in there, right? Fewest conceded. There we go. So, fewest conceded. Madrid conceded 25. And we've conceded 63. 63 goals. Let's just... If I could if I could sort by position, but I can't. We'll have to go into here and go into the full stages. And then go goals against, right? So, uh, no, no, no. I want to do it by points. Yeah, I want to do it by points. Sorry. I'm trying to get my head straight about what I want to show. But if you see here, yeah, so we finished sixth in the Europa League. I don't think we... I think it's only going to go to fifth, to Sevilla. We finished sixth. 63 goals against is there. That is the next Levante in 13th of the team that conceded the same as us. That is crazy. Imagine if we just kept 10 more clean sheets. How many more points that would be? The XG table has us in 7th, so we're actually not too far away from our XG. But the XG, we've scored 11 more goals than we should have done. We've conceded 6 more than we should have done. So we've actually got 8 more points than we should have. But, yeah, it's just that concede. How do we not concede as many goals? Maybe we are playing. Maybe I'm a bit too aggressive in our system. Who knows? I'll have a think about it. We'll be back for the next season. Thank you so much for watching. This time it is the end of the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.